the 42nd plenary meeting of the 10th emergency special session of the General Assembly is called to order. The General Assembly will continue its consideration of agenda item five entitled Illegal Israeli Actions in Occupied East Jerusalem and the rest of the occupied Palestinian territory. To resume the debate on the item pursuant to the decision taken at the 40th plenary meeting on 27th October 2023. In that regard, I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Chile. Senor President, we wish to point out that three weeks since the beginning of the crisis in the Gaza Strip, a result of the inability of the Security Council so far to take decisions on international peace and security affecting thousands of civilians and especially women and girls, that this responsibility now falls to this General Assembly. For this reason, it is absolutely crucial that all members of this organization be able to agree on a clear message to put an end to this harrowing state of affairs. Chile supports the efforts of the Secretary General and various stakeholders to enable a resolution to this conflict. We highlight the work on the ground that he and the agencies of the UN system have been undertaking with a view to guaranteeing the peace and security of the entire population. We also highlight the diplomatic efforts that friendly countries and organizations have been pursuing in order to achieve a peaceful solution through dialogue between the parties involved. Chile has held a historical and consistent position as regards the peaceful settlement of disputes and recognition of the two states, Israel and Palestine, as well as the right of both to exist alongside one another in harmony within internationally secure and recognized borders with full respect to the human rights of all of their inhabitants. This solution, however, is very far from becoming a reality. This has taken a new turn since the terrorist acts perpetrated by Hamas on the 7th of October. We unreservedly condemn and unequivocally condemn the actions of Hamas as we do any terrorist act, acts of violence and hostilities against a civilian population. We therefore also call for the unconditional release of all hostages held by this organization which has committed terrorist acts and they should ensure the well-being and treatment of the hostages in accordance with international law. By the same token, we are concerned by Israel's military operation in Gaza. The use of force under the banner of the self-defense of a state that has been under attack should be guided by the principles of proportionality, differentiation, and precaution. However, in light of the facts, this is not being complied with. Since the 7th of October, there have been bombardments of public infrastructure, civilian housing, educational centers, health centers, and even installations of the, uh, U, the of UNRWA, the Agency of the United Nations uh, for the Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees. The impact of this on lives, on the destruction of families, has called lonely, causing loneliness, orphans, the loss of faith and hope in life itself. These are just some of the consequences. There is no doubt that this will leave consequences on 
another generation and there is no rationality in war. Indeed, violence cannot be resolved through further violence. By the same token, the Israeli of, of, of Gaza has deprived them of fuel, water, and other basic necessities for human life. In addition, the order to evacuate the northern part of Gaza has led to forced displacement of the population. All of these facts are a breach of international humanitarian law and international human rights. We call for these actions to be investigated by the competent bodies in order to determine and demand the accountability of the states involved. Chile, in accordance with the permanent principles of its foreign policy and in this organization, has aligned itself to the relevant resolutions as regards preservation of peace in human rights, the right to self-determination, as well as respect and promotion of human rights. In this way, as regards the Palestinian people, we have developed a long-standing position supporting the right of the Palestinian people to constitute a sovereign state as established in resolutions of the UN, including 121 and 242 of this General Assembly. We also issue an urgent call for the swift co completion of uh, Resolution 2334 of the Security Council, where it is restated that the establishment of settlements by Israel in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, has no legal validity and represents a flagrant violation of international law and a major obstacle to the achievement of two states and broader, lasting, fair peace. The Resolution 7742 of uh, the General Assembly was supported by Chile, and we uh, highlight the rulings of the ICC in its advisory opinion on the applications of continued violations by Israel of the rights of the Palestinian people to self-determination. We hope that the court can assist the international community when it comes to verifying the legal obligations that serve as a basis for the quest for a definitive solution which will guarantee the rights of all of the inhabitants of these areas. And highlighting Chile's commitment to human rights, international humanitarian law, and support for the uh, victims of the conflict in the Middle East, the government of my country has made available a contribution to humanitarian assistance for the civilian populations in Gaza and the occupied Palestinian territory. These, this support comes from the Chilean Fund Against Hunger and Poverty and will be channeled through UNRWA. This is the third contribution that Chile is making to this cause. President, we call on the parties involved to begin a ceasefire immediately. It is urgent that the blockade of Gaza by Israel ceases also and that humanitarian aid comes to support the Palestinian civilian population. We support the calls for dialogue from the international community to prevent further escalation of violence in the region. This would only bring more and greater damage for the civilian population and loss of human life. We must recognize that the situation in Gaza has been uh, condemned in many ways, and Chile has condemned these. Also, the uh, f forced displacement, the f f failure, the uh, arbitrary delimitation of zones, and the imposition of a, a system of checkpoints that not only impedes uh, freedom of movement, but actually has a, a grave impact on the rights to education, to work, and to health. Chile reiterates that the region needs and deserves peace, and this can only be the result of negotiations between Israel and Palestine and the political will to bring together radically different positions 
in light of the current situation, it is essential for the international community to take an active position to aid in deactivating the conflict that has already taken thousands of lives, the vast majority of them innocent lives. Like all conflicts, this substantially affects and disproportionately affects women, girls, and boys. We watch with great regret the events as they unfold, and we see that it is a moral imperative for the world empowered by human rights law to ensure that indiscriminate attacks against civilian populations end. Chile has had and will continue to have a clear voice in bilateral, multilateral fora seeking ways to articulate its measures with other states in order to put in place actions for a cross-cutting solution to achieve a political settlement to the conflict. We reiterate that this should be supported with the economic and social empowerment of the women affected by this harrowing conflict. We also call for the promotion of women's leadership at all levels. This is a strategic issue to help us achieve a sustainable and inclusive peace. President, having said all of the above, last month Chile voted in favor of resolution for the protection of civilians in uh, compliance with uh, legal and humanitarian obligations. Finally, our country, Chile, would like to offer its condolences to the families and loved ones of the victims, and we extend our most sincere and committed solidarity to the injured. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Chile, and I now invite the distinguished representative of Costa Rica to take the floor. Señor Presidente. President, Costa Rica regrets that none of the draft resolutions considered by the Security Council have been adopted despite clear efforts to address the very grave humanitarian situation. However, this General Assembly, through this emergency special session, is meeting to find lasting solutions to the emergency crisis in the Middle East that the Security Council seems once again to be able uh, to offer a way out to. We uh, regret that uh, Canada's amendment was not adopted. We and uh, Hamas and their actions since the start of this crisis have caused, uh, have brought to great suffering to the people of Israel and Palestine. My delegation voted in favor of the resolution only because in light of the inaction of the Security Council and the urgent need to protect innocent civilians, the international community could not wait any longer. But it is very clear Costa Rica reiterates its strongest condemnation of the terrorist attacks perpetrated by Hamas on the 7th of October. These actions have no justification whatsoever. Hamas has shown itself to be a terrorist organization with no consideration for the most basic principles of human rights. Our solidarity, our absolute solidarity goes with Israel and to all victims since the beginning of the crisis. We recognize that Israel has the right to self-defense in light of the horrific attacks of the group called Hamas, which does not represent the Palestinian people. Hamas should release all of the hostages. It should put down its weapons. All of those involved in the actions of the 7th of October should hand themselves over and be judged for their genocidal acts. We also condemn the use of by Hamas of people and civilian infrastructure, including hospitals and schools, as shields in uh, infringement of international humanitarian law. We are deeply concerned by the escalation of violence, and we uh, remind the parties of the obligation to adhere to international law, especially international humanitarian law, including the Geneva Conventions and its protocols and customary international humanitarian law. 
even in situations of conflict, there are rules. The most sacred of these rules is respect and protection for the life and security of all civilian people. The fundamental principles of international humanitarian law provide us with clear guidance in times of war. The principles of differentiation and proportionality are crucial. Access to humanitarian assistance is obligatory and it is urgently needed. The protection of civilians and those outside of combat is a very basic need. The specific vulnerabilities of the civilian population should be taken into account. A person with a physical disability cannot listen to an evacuation warning in the same way that a healthy person does and cannot follow the instructions in the same way. Also, children find that their fragility is increased in times of conflict. President Costa Rica notes with great concern the humanitarian tragedy that has resulted from the conflict. We stand in solidarity with all of the innocent victims, both in Israel and in Palestine. In accordance with the above, we wish to make the following calls urgently. First of all, we call again for the immediate and unconditional release of all of the hostages held by Hamas. Taking hostages in an armed conflict is a clear violation of international humanitarian law. The fact that amongst the uh, hostages, we also know that there are boys and uh, children and the elderly it makes this situation even more serious. Secondly, humanitarian access that is secure, swift and unhindered must be ensured. Humanitarian actors need guarantees of clear, practical and permanent access in order to assist a population that is in desperate need, including through humanitarian breaks and corridors when necessary. None of these elements can be conditional upon any of the others. All of these are humanitarian imperatives in their own right. Finally, we call for an immediate ceasefire against civilians. Our priority should be, afford, should be to avoid any further loss of life of innocence and any further suffering. Costa Rica also calls for a transfer of conventional weapons to the zone of conflict to be suspended in accordance with Article 6 and 7 of the Treaty on the Arms uh, on uh, Weapons Trade. These uh, weapons can be used to commit or facilitate grave violations of international humanitarian law and human rights. The only way to bring us closer to a lasting peace is to avoid creating further innocent victims and preventing further escalation of the conflict. President Costa Rica underscores that the only sustainable solution to this crisis will be the establishment of two states that live in conditions of security under a just, lasting and comprehensive peace. Peace is possible, but it requires a firm commitment from all. I thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished representative of Costa Rica and now invite the distinguished representative of Maldives to take the floor. Mr. President, we gather here under the Uniting for Peace resolution adopted by this assembly in 1950. Each time that we have gathered under this resolution to address the issue of illegal Israeli action in occupied East Jerusalem and the occupied Palestinian territory, it is with profound shock that we are confronted with unrelenting images of human suffering. We welcome last Friday's resolution by this assembly advocating for an immediate 
enduring and sustainable humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. We strongly urge the Security Council to unite and take resolute action to halt the violence against innocent civilians. Mr. President, the reality on ground is that of the two million residents in Gaza, half of them are children. 30% of those children are under the age of 10. And today, it is these young children that are suffering the most. Accepting the loss of these young lives as mere collateral damage is a severe breach of universally accepted ethical principles. It is a severe breach of international law, including the Geneva Conventions and the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, the standards that reflect the global consensus that the lives of innocent children must be safeguarded at all costs. It is a severe breach of our shared human values and diminishes the moral integrity of any society that chooses to tolerate it. Mr. President, the, Maldivian, the Maldives was accepted to the United Nations in 1965 as its smallest member. In our, first, in our very first statement to this esteemed assembly, our permanent representative stated, whatever the size of a country or its population, a free state can make a contribution to the cause of coexistence. These words, our commitment to the principles of United Nations Charter and our commitment to the rule of law continue to guide our work at the United Nations. This is why, though oceans apart, Maldivians remain resolute in our support for Palestinian people and the Palestinian cause. In this recent conflict, the Maldives has donated two million cans of tuna to the people of Palestine. Though modest, it is a gesture that underscores our enduring commitment and unwavering solidarity with the people of Palestine. The people of Maldives are also making financial contributions and organizing fundraisers to provide support to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We will continue to speak up for the Palestinian people, for the Palestinian cause, and for peace in the region. Our support is driven not only by our principles, but also by a moral obligation. We once again reaffirm our unwavering support for the Palestinian people in their legitimate quest for their inalienable rights, including self-determination. We are resolute in our belief that enduring peace can only materialize through the creation of a sovereign Palestinian state founded on pre-1967 borders and with East Jerusalem as its capital. Mr. President, what we are witnessing today is not a conflict that started earlier this month, but a continuation of decades of oppression of Palestinian people that have shattered multiple lives and suffocated hopes of innocent people over several generations. We firmly believe in equal application of the rule of law among all states. Accountability must be enforced for violations of international and humanitarian laws, eschewing selective justice. This conflict is therefore not merely a legal issue. It is a fundamental matter of justice. But we have witnessed selective justice in play throughout this crisis. The evident double standard in the global narrative of this protracted conflict is concerning. The partiality, knowingly or unknowingly, serves to dehumanize and minimize, enabling and even justifying indiscriminate violence and further marginalizing the Palestinian perspective. Mr. President, the settlement of Israel-Palestine conflict is one of the major issues in which the United Nations Security Council has repeatedly failed. 
It has failed to take unified stance against acts of violence and hostilities directed at civilians and the protection of medical and humanitarian personnel as stipulated by international humanitarian law. These failures undermine the Council's legitimacy. We take this opportunity to emphasize the urgent need for reform of the Security Council to ensure its continued relevance and effectiveness in upholding global peace and security. We reiterate our call to the Security Council to act decisively, building upon this Assembly's efforts to halt violence against innocent civilians. Mr. President, the rapidly escalating crisis in Gaza has reached an alarming point, demanding urgent and immediate action. As airstrikes increase and the death toll climbs now over 8,000, a ground invasion has commenced, even as the Assembly calls for a ceasefire. The situation gravely threatens to expand the conflict further. The government of Maldives strongly condemns the attacks on medical facilities, including Al Ahli Arab Hospital, and most recently the continuous bombardment surrounding the Indonesian hospital, Al Shifa Hospital, the Turkish Hospital, and Al Qud Hospital. We condemn the unacceptable attack on residential areas of the Jabalia refugee camp just this morning. The attacks on places of worship and humanitarian workers. These actions not only cause irreversible damage to essential infrastructure, but also place the lives of thousands at dire risk, violating international law and basic human decency. We urgently call for an immediate and unconditional ceasefire and for strict adherence to international mandates safeguarding civilian infrastructure and personnel. UN agencies are sounding the alarm about a dire humanitarian crisis unfolding in Gaza. We extend our heartfelt condolences to all families affected. Our thoughts are also with the humanitarian workers who have sacrificed their lives in service, including the loss of over 60 UN staff in Gaza. The Maldives is grateful to the UN, Egypt, and other others for facilitating the entry of humanitarian aid through the Rafah border crossing. However, this is insufficient. We urge Israel to collaborate with its neighboring states to ensure uninterrupted humanitarian assistance and the delivery of essential services at the required scale. The blockade of Gaza must end to mitigate the acute humanitarian crisis. We echo the calls for respect for the rule of law and genuine political engagement to find a diplomatic, sustainable, and lasting solution. The Palestinians have placed their hope in international law, the UN Charter, and our multilateral system for their survival. It is abhorrent that we have allowed this hope to be met with nothing but hollow words. The sanctity of innocent life, particularly that of children, is non-negotiable. Tonight, when I go home, I can hold my son as he falls asleep in my arms. But how many Palestinian mothers and fathers are mourning the loss of their children? We implore the members of this August Assembly to act with courage, not as a matter of political convenience, but as a moral duty that transcends borders and politics for the sake of a more peaceful world. The lives of innocent children and families in Gaza hang in the balance. War is indeed not an answer. This emergency special session must continue to unite us. It must fuel our collective conscience to bring justice, dignity, and security to the Palestinians and to the Middle East. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Maldives for his statement, and I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Lebanon.
السيد الرئيس. Mr. President, my delegation welcomes the adoption of the resolution entitled Protection of Civilians and Upholding Legal and Humanitarian Obligations presented by the Arab Group, which is considered to be the first serious step by the United Nations to end the suffering, uh, humanitarian suffering in Gaza. Sir, we find ourselves today before the UN General Assembly in an exceptional manner because the natural place that is to address those matters that threaten international peace and security is the Security Council. But some of the members of the Council have decided to grant time to Israel so that they would be able to complete their military battle as if 75 years of conflict were not enough and is enough to complete the Israeli plan to displace Palestinians from the land and replace them with other illegal settlers. Mr. President, we must show our unity to reach an immediate ceasefire and to end a senseless aggression. We must open safe corridors to deliver basic goods for the relief of civilians in besieged Gaza. Also, we must rescue the wounded and save those lives that can be saved. We must also block any project of forced displacement of the Palestinian people. Palestine is the only natural place for these inhabitants. Mr. President, the Israeli-Arab conflict for, for which many international resolutions have been passed without being implemented by Israel is not a new conflict. Its repercussions will not end if there is no sincere will to resolve it. Experience so far has shown that this issue will not be resolved unless the international community assumes its respons responsibilities by pressuring Israel to implement the relevant international resolutions and compel it from, to withdraw from occupied Arab territories and also recognize the Palestinians' right to exist and live in their own independent state within these 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Otherwise, this struggle will continue for generations and generations after us. Mr. President, the ongoing Israeli attacks on Lebanon affecting peaceful villages along the border have forced more than 20,000 Lebanese to flee their homes in search of safety and security. The con repeated attacks on the Lebanese army and UNIFIL positions do not discriminate between military personnel, civilians, journalists, and aid workers and the use of internationally banned substances such as white phosphorus are flagrant violations of international resolutions, resolution 1071 and international humanitarian law. Sir, these Israeli violations, which Lebanon has been witnessing for the past three weeks, are added to Israel's record full of violations against Lebanon's sovereignty and land, part of which is still occupied in the Sheba farm area, in Kafra Shuba, and the outskirts of the town of Al Mari, which includes, in part, the urban expansion of the village of Gashar. We call on the international community to pressure Israel to stop its destructive ag aggression and repeated violations and its constant fraud. Mr. President, Israel is launching a major aggression against the Gaza Strip from the air, sea, and land. The result, the certain result is thousands of innocent civilians will be, become victims, and th therefore it is imperative that we act immediately. This is a responsibility shared by all countries to stop the bloodbath that does not distinguish between an infant, a mother, or an older person. We must beware 
any plans to spread chaos and internal uh, disputes within the Palestinian areas. Today, the world is facing two choices, either remain silent about the transformation of Gaza into a mass grave of more than two million Palestinians, or immediately stop this war and start the path of a political solution based on UN resolutions. Mr. President, from this international rostrum, Lebanon calls for an end to the deaths, to the exoduses, the max massacres, before it's too late. I thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished representative of Lebanon, and I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Yemen. President, I thank you for the resumption of the 10th emergency session of the General Assembly. Under the uh, agenda item, United for Peacekeeping, we align ourselves with the statement made by His Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Jordan, on behalf of the Arab group, and the statement delivered by the representative of Mauritania on behalf of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Sir, this meeting is being held after the failure of the Security Council to assume its responsibilities in accordance with the UN Charter when it comes to international peace and security. At a time when the brutal aggressions continues in, against Gaza and daily massacres are committed by Israel, the occupying power, against innocent and defenseless citizens, women and children, this aggression, this brutality constitutes a war of genocide against the Palestinians. The Yemeni people condemn uh, with the strongest terms possible, the brutal and continuous Israeli aggression on Gaza and the destruction of infrastructure and the targeting of civilians, especially women and children, without discrimination. And this, we also condemn the cutting off of electricity and food and medications from the civilian population. This is a full-fledged war crime a crime against humanity, and a flagrant violation of international law and human rights and international humanitarian law, as well as all international norms and standards. We wish to express our deepest condolences to the martyrs and their families, and we share our best wishes for a speedy recovery for the wounded. We warn, wish to warn you that these actions will have serious consequences that will not only disrupt the peace process in the Middle East, but will also exacerbate this wave of violence and chaos, and it will increase feelings of anger in the region. This will give terrorist and extremist groups uh, more reasons to spread uh, bloodshed throughout the region and the world. We're meeting today when Gaza has paid with the blood of its sons and daughters. There are more than 7,000 martyrs who have fallen, including 3,400 children and 2,500 women. Some were buried alive under the rubble. More than 2,000 women and more than 20,000 wounded, of which 75% were children and women, are also a significant. There are also 2,000 people still to be found under the rubble. There was a new massacre that took place today in the Jabalia camp in the Gaza Strip, which led to approximately 400 dead and wounded, the majority of which were women and children. Today, we're meeting when Israel, the occupying power, 
has destroyed hospitals, health centers, schools, mosques, and churches. We are meeting today while Israel has is destroyed a third of the Gaza Strip already and is raising its buildings to the ground. We meet today while Israel has uh, stopped the provision of fuel, electricity, and food to two and a half million people. And with all of this destruction, dis this aggression, massacres, and uh, ethnic cleansing, some still hesitate to call th things by their names and condemn these crimes against humanity and flagrant violations of human, human rights, international humanitarian law, and international law. This is a clear picture of the double standards that we prevail in the world today. Yesterday, from this rostrum, many delegations spoke and lectured us about the principles of human rights, of inter international law, and human conscience. And they tried to preserve the high moral ground and condemned the war and brutal violations due to the killings of civilians and the siege. And today, we see them either silent or biased in violation of these same principles. We in Yemen understand these double standards, for many have given us lectures on human rights and infrastructure protection. This is a dark time for humanity and for the international system. The worsening of the humanitarian crisis in Gaza and the failure of the international community to stop the scourge that has exceeded all limits and stop this war is a moral failure. Bef and now it is a failure of the application of international law and protecting uh, common human values and innocent civilians. The silence in, on the part of the international community is complicity in crime and cover-up. Today, the infrastructure has been destroyed. Children and women have been killed. En entire families have been exterminated. Is this self-defense? Have international legal standards become uh, optional according to color, sex, and religion? Has the application of these standards stopped at the borders of Gaza and the occupied Palestinian territory? All these questions need answers. We are facing a crossroads. We can either triumph for humanity and human conscience, or we will lose our humanity. Mr. President, we reiterate our call for an immediate ceasefire and access, uh, unfettered access of humanitarian aid and medical staff and access to health centers and medical centers as well. Israel's prevention of urgent humanitarian aid into Gaza and forcing the citizens of the Gaza Strip to flee their houses is a grave violation of international law and international humanitarian law. And we reject the forced displacement of Palestinians outside their homeland or the threat of it. This is a violation of international law and the fourth Geneva Convention of 1949. What happened on October 7th, 2023 is the result of continued Israeli occupation over the course of 75 years. Therefore, a just and comprehensive peace is the only way to end this conflict, strengthen security and stability in the region, and establish an independent and sovereign Palestinian state on the borders of June 4th, 1967 with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the resolutions of international legitimacy and the Arab initiatives. Without this solution, the region will know no stability. Sir, allow me to wonder how m much blood uh, how will be spilt before the public conscience awakens and stops this? If the international conscience is unable to win for the innocent Palestinians, then at least it, it has to triumph, or this will be a failure for humanity in the 
21st century. What would you say if your children asked you, what did you do to stop the massacre against the children of Gaza? We, along with all of our supporters, the supporters of truth, the international community, the charter, and the principles of the United Nations are on the right side of history. And history will record on which side you will stand. The international community facing these crimes committed by the Israeli occupying power against civilians in Gaza, including women and children, we ask them to take on the criminal res responsibility of Israel. Criminals must be brought to justice and must uh, service, must uh, be punished. The principles of humanity, justice, independence, and international law will prevail and triumph. And force will not triumph over the power of right. In conclusion, we thank all member states who voted in favor of the draft resolution of the General Assembly, which focused on the importance of stopping the war and protecting civilians and to allow the arrival of humanitarian aid in a rapid manner and to respect international legal uh, constraints. I thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished representative of Yemen and I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Somalia. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I express my deep appreciation for the prompt and timely reconvening of the General Assembly's 10th Emergency Special Session on the question of Palestine. A time yet another tragically marked in the long history of the Palestinian people who continue to be under occupation for half a century. We align ourselves with the statement delivered on behalf of the Arab group and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation by Jordan and Mauritania, respectively. The ongoing conflict has resulted in countless lives being lost and a humanitarian crisis that can no longer be ignored. At the outset, I would like to begin by expressing my heartfelt condolences to the Palestinian people and government over the loss of thousands of innocent civilian lives including women and children of Al-Ahli Arab Hospital, and offer my wishes for the speedy recovery of the injured ones. I pray Almighty God to bestow his strength and resilience on the people of Palestine. The protection of civilians is a fundamental principle of international law and a moral imperative that should guide our actions. Regardless of the political complexities, and historical context, we must prioritize the safety and well-being of innocent men, women, and children caught in the crossfire of this protracted conflict. In the occupied Palestinian territory, civilians have endured years of violence, displacement, and a constant state of fear under a ruthless occupation. They face daily challenges that threaten their basic human rights, like access to clean water, health care, education, and a sense of security. The endless indiscriminate use of force by the occupying force, including bombing of schools, shelling of hospitals, and missile attacks on residential areas and camps, has taken a devastating toll on innocent Palestinian lives. It's incumbent upon the international community to act swiftly and decisively to ensure the protection of civilians. First and foremost, it's crucial to establish safe zones and humanitarian corridors to provide essential aid and assistance to those in need. I commend the United Nations Relief and Works Agency's vital role 
in coordinating relief efforts and emphasizing the need for generous donors to provide the agency with sufficient, predictable, and sustainable funding. Furthermore, we encourage the neighboring countries, civil society, and private sector to redouble their efforts in alleviating the suffering of the Palestinians inside and outside the occupied territories. Second, all parties involved must commit to an immediate unconditional ceasefire and adhere to their obligations under international humanitarian law, which prohibits the targeting of civilians, UN staff, journalists, civilian infrastructure, and safe zones. Accountability for violations must be pursued through impartial investigations, and those responsible for war crimes must be held accountable for their actions. Third, diplomatic efforts need to be intensified to find a lasting and just solution to the conflict. Dialogue, negotiations, and a commitment to a two-state solution are essential to achieving a peaceful coexistence. The international community must actively revive these efforts and encourage all parties to engage in meaningful dialogue with the aim of reaching a comprehensive and a lasting peace agreement. Finally, education and raising awareness are also a crucial component of addressing the conflict. By raising awareness about the plight of the Palestinian people, we can counter misinformation and monopolization of the narrative in order to foster empathy and understanding about their legitimate national aspiration of self-determination. Educating ourselves and future generations about the historical and political context of this conflict can help break down stereotypes and prejudice while achieving a more balanced and nuisance understanding of the situation. In conclusion, the protection of civilians is an urgent and pressing issue that demands our immediate attention at this critical juncture. We must advocate for the respect of international law, establish safe zones, raising awareness about the plight of the Palestinians, and pursue diplomatic solutions to end the conflict. I reiterate that the only viable option for the resolution of the long-standing conflict is the end of the occupation of the Palestinian and the full recognition of a free, sovereign, and independent Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with relevant resolutions of the Security Council and the General Assembly. Somali government and its people will continue to support and stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people and government in their unwavering pursuit of their legitimate rights, including to live in peace within secure and internationally recognized borders. I thank you, Mr. President. I should like to thank the distinguished representative of Somalia, and I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Mexico. Señor Presidente. President, it has not yet been two years since adoption of Resolution 76-262, and seven times you have now convened this General Assembly, and vetoes have been exercised on seven occasions by permanent members of the Security Council. At this time, firstly, we are uh, convened here due to the uh, veto on the last 18th of October by the U.S. to draft resolution S-2023-773, a draft that had 12 votes in favor, two abstentions, and was essentially humanitarian in nature, the aim bringing, being to bring an end to the suffering of civilian populations, both in Israel and in Palestine. Mexico believes that any use of the veto to impede action of the Security Council is unacceptable, and this most recent case is no exception. Since 1945, Mexico has had an unshakable position against the use of the veto by permanent members of the Security Council. This faculty has been exercised in breach of the solemn commitment 
of four permanent members on the 7th of June 1945 at the San Francisco conference at that time, they declared. It's not to be assumed, however, that the permanent members, any more than the non-permanent members, would use their veto power willfully to obstruct the operation of the Council. La reali the reality has regrettably been rather different. Let us remind you now that during his uh, statement at the high-level debate at the 77th General Assembly, President Biden said the following. Members of the UN Security Council, including the United States, should consistently uphold and defend the UN Charter and refrain from the use of veto, except in rare, extraordinary situations, to ensure that the Council remains credible and effective. It's lamentable. It is regrettable that the veto to the draft resolution S-2023-773 has passed, cast doubt precisely on the credibility and effectiveness of the Council, specifically at a time when its action is so urgently needed. The draft resolution in question was a balanced text and contained the most urgent and most important elements under the current uh, circumstances and specifically uh, had ensured that the Security Council continues to be credible and effective. Given the gravity and the fragility of the situation on the ground, there is no justification for impeding the adoption of this draft. The first version was actually co-sponsored by Mexico. In addition to this veto, there was another used by Russia and China to draft resolution S-2023-792, this time presented by the delegation of the United States. In this case, after the vote, there were 10 votes in favor, three against, and two abstentions. In the opinion of my delegation, unlike the Brazilian text that was able to garner more support from members of the Council, this draft did not come from a balanced approach. Nevertheless, a veto is a veto, and my delegation recognizes that having obtained the necessary votes for its adoption, the action of two permanent members has once again caused a deadlock in the Security Council. It is important to mention that this last veto was immediately followed by the re rejection of draft resolution S-2023-795. That was presented by Russia. This had four votes in favor, two against, and nine abstentions. This cycle of mutual rejection uh, declared as a chronicle of a death foretold by both uh, proponents in their uh, uh, interventions at the debate on the Middle East on Wednesday, 24th of October, is also toxic and reflects the dysfunctionality that may now characterize this body. It also reminds us of the uh, bad practices and stalemate from the Cold War period. My delegation issues a call to halt these political tactics that only represent an abuse of the Security Council at the expense of those who are suffering on the ground. We cannot and we must not lose sight of the fact that what is at stake here are human lives. In this context, Mexico reiterates its call to those who have not yet done so to join the French and Mexican initiative on restriction of the use of the veto that now has 106 signatories. President. As we indicated at the Security Council, Mexico condemns in an energetic and unequivocal way terrorism and extremist violence in all of its forms and manifestations, independently of who commits it, where it is committed, under what rationalization. We reiterate our strong condemnation of the terrorist attacks against the people of Israel on the 7th of October committed by Hamas, and we recognize the right of Israel to protect its citizens and territory, as well as that uh, right to guarantee their security, provided that it is done in strict adherence to international law and in full observance of the principles of necessity and proportionality that govern any use of force. Once again, we demand that Hamas immediately and unconditionally release any hostages under its custody, in which includes Mexican nationals. We are also concerned by the Israeli response and in agreement with, uh, uh, according to Archer, so far caused more than 8,000 uh, deaths, 21 
1,000 uh, injured in addition to incalculable damage to infrastructure and civilian property in Palestine. It is awful to note that uh, day after day since the resumption of this session, this number continues to increase. This must end. We condemn any indiscriminate attacks directed at a civilian population under any circumstances, as well as any attacks against medical or humanitarian personnel or against civilian property and infrastructure that is essential that may, in fact, constitute war crimes. Mexico reiterates its call for an immediate and lasting uh, cessation to hostilities in all of the territory occupied Palestinian territories, specifically direct or indirect attacks against civilians by all parties to the conflict. We also call for a lifting of the siege that is currently being inflicted upon the Palestinian population, given that reprisals are in breach of international law. We welcome the a beginning of the arrival of humanitarian convoys to Gaza, but this is not enough. The provision of basic services as well as the lifting of restrictions to the movement of people and goods both in Gaza and in, uh, and in the West Bank is vital. Similarly, the passage of civilian people through this humanitarian corridor is, should also be allowed. We profoundly regret the death of United Nations staff and we issue a call uh, for a revocation of the decision to withdraw the visas to UN operatives in Israel. We also wish to take this opportunity to reconfirm our total support to uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres and the entire United Nations system in their uh, political and humanitarian efforts at this time of crisis. We, in light of the grave humanitarian situation in the region, Mexico will increase its voluntary contribution to UNRWA in recognition of their humanitarian work, which is now more necessary than ever. President. Any occupation is illicit. It undermines the international order and contravenes the Charter of the United Nations. There is no right to an unlimited occupation. Any acquisition of territory by force is null and void. We demand that the occupying power ceases its occupation and any other acts that affect the territorial integrity of the state of Palestine in compliance with the relevant resolutions of the Security Council. Mexico is in favor of a complete and definitive solution to the conflict under the principle of two states in a way that addresses the legitimate concerns for security of Israel and that enables the consolidation of a Palestinian a state of Palestine that is politically and economically viable and that lives alongside Israel within secure and internationally recognized borders in accordance with the relevant resolutions of the United Nations and Security Council as highlighted by Mexico's foreign ministry on the 23rd of September at this pulpit. We must recognize the rights of the people to Israel, but not at the expense of, of the Palestinian people. In conclusion, President, we hope that the Security Council can live up to the gravity of the situation and take prompt action Firstly, to ensure that, pe that there is an end to the loss of life and that we open a new chapter for humanitarian assistance and political dialogue. It is at the darkest hours when it is most difficult to see any hope on the horizon that we are forced to redouble our effort to put an end to the cycle of violence and ensure that a viable solution to two states and two people is possible and they can live in peace. We they must make this a reality and live up to the principles that we laid down 78 years ago. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Mexico and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Japan. Madam President, 50 years ago this month, the 1973 Arab-Israeli war began. 30 years ago, the Oslo Accords were signed. 26 years ago, the first meeting of the 10th emergency special session of this body was held. Who could have imagined we would still be here today? The horrifying series of events that began on 7 October continues unabated spiraling ever downwards with, with far too many losses. 
Japan extends its sincere condolences to the families of the victims. Japan once again unequivocally condemns Hamas's brutal terror attack on Israel and its taking of hostages. The international community should never tolerate such heinous acts. Every member state has a right to defend itself and its people, and such right must be exercised in accordance with international law. Just recently, Israel announced an expansion of its ground operation in Gaza. The humanitarian situation in Gaza has never been worse. It is catastrophic, and the Palestinian people are in desperate need of food, water, fuel, and medicine. We also extend our sincere condolences to the families of the victims and for the loss of UN staff and personnel. This meeting was convened because the Security Council has repeatedly failed to take action. The Security Council, which has the primary responsibility to maintain international peace and security, should urgently and genuinely address the Western crisis and prevent this conflict from spreading across the region. As a current council member, Japan is working tirelessly with other council members, in particular with the 10 elected members, to craft a resolution acceptable to all. The world cannot wait for the council to finally fulfill its responsibility and speak in a unified voice. Several hostages have been released. More must follow immediately as the families of more than 200 abducted victims are waiting in despair for news that their loved ones are safe. We demand the immediate and unconditional release of the remaining hostages. Japan fully supports the immediate humanitarian pauses and the establishment of, human, establishment of humanitarian corridors to ensure that humanitarian assistance can be provided. Full, rapid, safe, and unhindered humanitarian access consistent with international humanitarian law must be allowed. While dozens of trucks have passed through the Rafah crossing, Hundreds more must follow to meet the dire needs of over two million people. We strongly hope for the early de-escalation of the situation, which will be an important step for durable peace and stability in the region. In this vein, Japan has recently approved a 10 million US dollars aid package as part of its response to the Ocho humanitarian flash appeal. More is needed, given the gravity of the situation in Gaza. We call on all member states and humanitarian partners to scale up their assistance to meet these urgent needs. But for the humanitarian aid to reach people in need, we need humanitarian poses and humanitarian corridors. Madam President, the international community needs to work together to restore hope and pave a path for peace and security in both Palestine and Israel. Japan supports a two-state solution whereby Israel and a future independent Palestinian state live side by side in peace and security. All parties must make serious efforts to this end. For now, we must all act to de-escalate the situation with a sense of urgency. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Japan and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Malaysia. Thank you, Madam President, for convening this important meeting. Malaysia, together with a group of countries, supported the request by the Arab group and the OIC for the resumption of this meeting. Malaysia aligns itself with the statement delivered by Mauritania on behalf of the OIC. We express our deepest condolences to the bereaved families who are mourning the loss of their loved ones in the horrific ongoing hostilities. Madam President, the magnitude of atrocities inflicted upon 
the population of Gaza defies all rational comprehension and has shocked our human sensibilities to the core. For more than three weeks now, we have been witnessing indiscriminate bombings, the killing of civilians, and the destruction of civilian objects and infrastructure. Sacrosanct principles of international law, including international human rights and humanitarian laws, continue to be violated. There is absolutely no precaution, distinction, or proportionality in Israel's actions. More than 8,000 civilians have been killed, including more than 3,000 innocent children. Around 70% of civilian fatalities in the ongoing act of collective punishment by Israel on the Gazan population are women and children. Water and electricity have been cut off and the supply of fuel has been banned. To say that Gaza is facing a humanitarian catastrophe is an understatement. It is effectively a death sentence on the entire population. Under the Geneva Conventions, attacks on civilians, hospitals, places of worship, and other indispensable civilian infrastructure are unlawful and tantamount to war crimes. Malaysia condemns the heinous and barbaric attacks on the civilian population of Gaza, 40% of whom are children. All civilian lives, regardless of race, religion, and nationality, must be protected. We are also gravely concerned with the humanitarian calamity that continues to, up, to unfold. Malaysia joins others in demanding for an immediate ceasefire. This is absolutely vital to stop further loss of life and for necessary humanitarian work be carried out. We call for the establishment of humanitarian corridors, as well as unhindered and unfettered humanitarian access, so that aid can reach those in need throughout Gaza without any impediment. The supply of electricity, water, and fuel must be restored. These are life-saving essentials. Malaysia also condemns the blackout of communication services. Communication services are a lifeline. Communication infrastructure and the right to communicate must always be protected. 1.4 million, or 62% of Gaza population, has been internally displaced. Malaysia categorically rejects actions of forcibly displacing the population of Gaza. It is a flagrant violation of international law. In fact, those who heeded the warning to evacuate to the south continue to fall victim to indiscriminate bombings. Many have died. No place is safe in Gaza at the moment. The increasing settlers' violence in the West Bank, which has led and is leading to forcible transfer of Palestinians, is also deeply concerning. Madam President, we pay tribute to all humanitarian heroes who continue to serve in Gaza. We salute their courage and commitment. Their safety and protection must be guaranteed. In the last 24 hours, three more UNRWA staff have been killed, bringing the total to 67 since the war began. We join others in mourning the 67 UNRWA staff. Malaysia has been a regular contributor to UNRWA. Noting the extremely dire humanitarian condition in Gaza at the moment, Malaysia has decided to allocate an additional emergency contribution to UNRWA. We appreciate the important role of the United Nations under the leadership of the Secretary General. We also acknowledge the important roles played by countries in the region. Malaysia is ready to collaborate with all international partners to address the humanitarian needs of Gaza. Madam President, Malaysia shares the widespread disappointment towards the Security Council expressed by many member states. The Security Council, the body entrusted with the maintenance of global peace and security, continues to be paralyzed due to politicization based on narrow self-interests of some of its members. They continue to abuse their great responsibility and privilege, turning the Council into an arena for one-upmanship and blame game 
instead of taking unified, swift, and decisive action to stop the war and save civilian lives. Their actions have exposed their hypocrisy, selectivity, and double standard. The General Assembly has stepped up where the Security Council has failed. We commend the 121 countries that had the courage to stand up for humanity and supported the resolution proposed by Jordan, co-sponsored by 46 countries, including Malaysia. The adoption of the resolution is a sign that we in the United Nations hear the resounding cry of people around the world demanding an immediate end to the massacre of innocent lives in Gaza. The resolution is a breakthrough and carries great moral authority. It is the important first step taken here at the United Nations, bringing back a glimmer of hope, faith, and trust in the multilateral process. We call on the Security Council to respond to this General Assembly resolution by taking prompt, unified, and decisive actions. Further inaction means continue being complicit in the crimes against humanity committed by Israel in Gaza. Madam President, according to UNICEF, Gaza has become a graveyard for children. More than 420 children are being killed or injured in Gaza every day. How many more children have to be orphaned, killed or maimed? How many more parents have to go through the ordeal of burying their innocent children? What more does it take for some of us to wake up, open their eyes to the truth and stand up for humanity? Be warned, history will judge. More than half of the population of Gaza are children and youth. They deserve hope for their future, not gloom and despair. Killing people will not kill their ideals. Wherever there is occupation and oppression, there is bound to be resistance. As free nations, we must unite to end occupation instead of perpetuating it. We must support the right to self-determination instead of denying it. The only way to attain peace and security for everybody in the region is by ending the illegal and oppressive occupation of Palestine. The vicious cycle of violence that its many generations have been enduring must end. Malaysia remains resolute in its support for the self-determination of the Palestinian people through the establishment of a free and independent state of Palestine in accordance with the two-state solution based on pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Malaysia and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Nicaragua. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, President. Nicaragua aligns itself with a statement delivered by Venezuela on behalf of the Group of Friends in Defense of the Charter of the United Nations. Nicaragua joined the initiative to convene this emergency special session in light of the grave humanitarian situation that is unfolding in Gaza and in solidarity with Palestine and with all civilians men and women, children, victims of this awful conflict, largely due to the failure to act and of the indifference now ongoing for decades of the Security Council. With the recent tragic and barbaric events in Palestine and Israel, it has once again become clear that the aforementioned Security Council continues to have a debt to humanity, to the international community, and to peace and justice, and above all, in the Middle East. It is regrettable that this body has not adopted a single re humanitarian resolution 
requiring ur an urgent ceasefire and access and provision of humanitarian assistance, above all, given the very fragile situation of the population that is getting worse day by day in Gaza. We reiterate that the Security Council must fully abide by its responsibilities that were conferred upon it in the Charter, and it must do so urgently and without double standards. From this Universal Forum, we continue to vigorously condemn the further worsening of the terrible Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It is causing more and more victims and greater and greater pain for so many families. The world's recognition of this conflict and especially of the inhumane situation that the Palestinian people in Gaza have been subjected to for more than 16 years, the occupation, the illegal blockade that has been imposed on them, all of this has converted this territory into a huge open-air prison, impoverishing a population of 2.3 million people, half of them being boys and girls. If this is to continue, it will only bring greater instability and insecurity to the Middle East and to the world. Nicaragua is convinced that peace and stability in the Middle East is only feasible through negotiation and through full implementation of all of the resolutions of the General Assembly and of the Security Council as regards Palestine. Nicaragua supports and will continue to support any efforts that will bring about a ceasefire. It is for this reason that we co-sponsor and have voted in favor of the resolution presented or submitted by Jordan on behalf of the Arab group. In this resolution, deep concern is expressed as regards the escalation of violence and the deterioration of the situation in particular due to the very large number of civilian victims. We highlight once again that the priority at all times is to protect the civilian population. This General Assembly has the imperative responsibility to demand an immediate ceasefire and also the protection of the population of Palestine without double standards and in equal conditions as human beings. We must value lives equally for all. The United Nations, the General Assembly and the Security Council are being called to take action as soon as possible to demand solutions by law and by justice in order to halt this senseless spiral of violence that n has already been transformed into a genocide. We have we must also thank the humanitarian agencies and governments that are assisting in dealing with the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The horrors that we have witnessed and condemned the attack on the hospital in Gaza that uh, took the uh, valuable lives of more than 700 individuals, most of them children, the uh, Reconciliation and National Unity Government of Nicaragua and the Nicaraguan people has always supported the just cause of the Palestinian people. It is a matter of principle. It is a matter of solidarity between uh, brothers in their struggle. And together with the rest of the international community, we consider that it is necessary to intensify international efforts in the quest towards a definitive and peaceful solution that will culminate in the realization of a state of Palestine with its capital in East Jerusalem and within the borders recognized in 1967. This is the only way to achieve a just and lasting peace in the Middle East. Living alongside the state of Israel in peace and security, both of them states this moral and historic obligation of all states to defend multilateralism, to defend the purposes and principles of the Charter of the United Nations and the peaceful settlement of disputes and abstaining from the use 
or the threat of the use of force in international relations. Our prayers to the families and uh, innocent people who have suffered so much, to Israeli families, to Palestinian families, to families of various nationalities, families of personnel of the United Nations and to families of journalists. Our love and respect goes out to each and every one of them. This situation of pain and suffering of the Palestinian people is shattering to us all. In recent days, thousands and thousands of people have been killed in Gaza. The attacks against medical installations are abhorrent, as is cutting off water, electricity, medical provisions, food and fuel. This has increased the insecurity of a population of 2.3 million people, half of them being children. They have no safe place to be or even to go. According to the recent estimates of the Office for the United, of the United Nations of Command, Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, more than 1.4 million Palestinians from Gaza have been displaced. More than 8,500 deaths have been reported. 67% of them are girls, women, or older adults. These figures include more than 3,800 children who have been killed. And every minute, there is an increase in suffering and there is more loss of life. One thing is very clear, and it is being demonstrated at this General Assembly and in all cities around the world. Palestine does not stand alone. The people of the world stand with Palestine. And this should be reflected in the resolution that we adopt and the thousands of protests of hundreds of thousands of people growing in number every day, every day including in the cities of countries that are hindering the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people. Hundreds and of thousands of people demanding peace, demanding a ceasefire and to the end of hostages in Gaza and demanding, uh, sorry, demanding an end to the siege of Gaza and justice for the Palestinian people. It is time here in the United Nations that we listen to the people of the world and their uproar and put an end to the historic injustice imposed on Palestine. Peace must prevail at all costs and over all things in order to leave way to the only true and just solution to states living in peace and security. All those present here know this very well. The Security Council has a historic responsibility that it must fulfill. It must now, once and for all, allow the full realization of the state of Palestine and so the realization of the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people. I thank you, Madam President. I thank the distinguished representative of Nicaragua. Now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Guyana. Thank you, Madam President. The government of Guyana supports the convening of this emergency special session of the General Assembly in light of the deeply distressing levels of violence and hostility unfolding in the Middle East, particularly in the Gaza Strip since October 7th. The targeting of civilians and civilian infrastructure and the resulting casualties and injuries the mass displacement of persons and the concomitant challenges of such movements are worrying to say the least. The strike on the Al-Ahi Hospital was nothing short of an illegal act of savagery that should never happen in any civilized society. The evacuation order to those in the Al-Quds Hospital must also be seen in the same way. Guyana expresses heartfelt condolences to those who lost loved ones in these tragic and undignified circumstances, and we pray for the speedy recovery of the injured. We also commiserate with the families and loved ones of UN staff members who were killed in this conflict. 
and we commend the UN staff and other humanitarian actors who continue to serve in these extreme circumstances. Madam President, 24 days ago, the world woke to the shocking news of an infiltration of Israeli territory by Hamas, rocket attacks on the country, and the killing and abduction of Israeli citizens. We condemn these events in the strongest possible terms and underscore that they were violations of international law. Since that attack, we have witnessed a military response by Israel unprecedented in scale and impact, and one which has created a catastrophic humanitarian crisis in the densely populated Gaza Strip. To compound the problem, the Gaza Strip was under complete siege for the next 13 days following the attack. There was no way out and nothing could get in. Electricity, water, fuel, and food supplies were cut off. And 1.1 million people were ordered to undertake a massive evacuation exercise from the north to the south of the Strip. We are all aware of the abyss to which the people of Gaza have been driven on account of these developments, even as war continues. Hapless civilians continue to bear the brunt of these attacks. We were disheartened to hear the assessment that no place is safe in Gaza, since hospitals, schools, and other buildings that should be safe spaces in accordance with international humanitarian law were also struck in indiscriminate strikes. Madam President, Guyana emphasizes the responsibility of parties to the conflict to fully and unconditionally respect and uphold the principles of international law, including international humanitarian law. Even wars have rules, and the principles of distinction, proportionality, humanita humanity, and necessity must be upheld. The protection of civilians is paramount and we call for an immediate end to the indiscriminate attacks on civilians and civilian infrastructure. Moreover, Guyana calls for the immediate and unconditional release of all Israeli hostages and for the immediate release of all Palestinian civilians unjustly held. We demand their safety, well-being, and humane treatment in compliance with international law. Madam President, the creation of a humanitarian corridor into Gaza is now an existential question. And Guyana was pleased to learn that the first aid convoy entered Gaza on 21st of October after 13 days of a complete siege. But this is not near enough. Before 7th October, at least 500 aid trucks entered Gaza daily. Today, it is a fraction of that. We call on those with influence on the relevant parties to exert all of it so that there is unhindered and continued flow of life-saving aid to the people of Gaza. A comprehensive ceasefire is crucial to the sustainability of the humanitarian intervention in Gaza. Guyana implores the parties to immediately cease the fighting and to choose the path of dialogue and peace. We also underscore the importance of avoiding further escalations of the violence to the West Bank and other parts of the region. We urge maximum restraint by all parties to this end. Madam President, Excellencies, true and principled leadership can never involve the overseeing of the killing of women and children. Shockingly, we have learned that more than 3,500 children have been killed in Gaza over these last 24 days, more than all those killed in conflicts in the world annually since 2019. Children whose joys had already been curtailed, living in the constant shadow of war and displacement. Children who already versed in the sounds of war could tell when hellish artillery was approaching and not only since October 7. Children who nevertheless dreamt, perhaps believed, that this world, this United Nations, would ensure that they and their families 
live in their own country, in their own state, in peace and security. But even as we mourn these little ones cut down before they can truly experience what it means to live in peace, we see their surviving brothers and sisters being denied food, water, yes, water, and other basic necessities. And the hospitals to which the battered and maimed turn for a chance at life are denied fuel. Madam President, Excellencies, the international community has failed these children and many, many more before them. It has failed the people of Palestine for more than 50 years. Guyana underscores a special responsibility of the Security Council to act in light of the threat that this situation poses to the maintenance of international peace and security. The current paralysis of the Council on this matter is therefore deeply concerning. We implore the Council to send a strong and clear message to the people of Israel and Palestine and the entire region that the rule of law will be upheld. In this context, Ghana was encouraged that this General Assembly did not falter when called upon to stand up for principles, justice, and the rule of law. We were among those who supported the resolution adopted last Friday, and we reiterate the provisions of that resolution. We, called upon, we call upon the concerned parties to adhere to those provisions as they are morally obligated to do. Madam President, Excellencies, let me underscore the importance of the responsibility and involvement of us all, the international community, in finding a solution. In the words of Guyanese poet Martin Carter, and I quote, like a web is spun in pattern, all are involved, all are consumed. The United Nations has a moral obligation to the people of Palestine and Israel to reinvigorate the peace process. It is the only way to guarantee the exercise of the inalienable right to self-determination by the Palestinian people and to address the security concerns of Israel. The Palestinian people continued to be pushed further and further behind, with their aspirations for development and peace strangled by cycle after cycle of violence and oppression for over seven decades. The urgent realization of the two-state solution based on the pre-1967 borders is critical. The government of Guyana is unwavering in its commitment to this objective and is ready to contribute constructively to any genuine effort to this end. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Guyana and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Namibia. Madam President, thank you for resuming the 10th emergency special session of the General Assembly under the Uniting for Peace resolution. This session resumes in the context of a world that is troubled, a world that looks to this august assembly as an international parliament of humanity to be bold and decisive and bring hope in these dark times. Allow me to draw on a life lesson that all of us have learned time and time again through each phase of our lives. There are two sides to every story. With this conflict in mind, Namibia is quick to caution that viewing a story from a different perspective should not be seen as disregard for the pain of the other. On 24 October 2023, during the open debate in the Security Council, we witnessed an unwarranted attack on the Secretary General when he stated that the attacks of October 7 did not occur in a vacuum. They did not, as this conflict predates this fateful day and the pain and horror for both Palestinian and Israelis did not start on this day. Let me categorically clarify that as Namibia, we view the current conflict through the prism of humanitarianism, international law, and human rights. It is, with, 
in this context that we call for the cessation of violence through a ceasefire, an end to the mass displacement of Palestinians, and an end to the attempts to starve Palestinians of humanitarian aid, including water and fuel. Last week, His Excellency Volker Turk, High Commissioner for Human Rights, stated that a binary view of the world rooted in you are either with me or against me is never going to advance peace. This is the message that we have for the Security Council, which has failed to take action in these dire times, these times when every minute that is lost has direct impact on whether people live or die. We urge council members to set aside their differences and in the letter and spirit of the principles and purposes of the sacrosanct UN Charter, save a generation that is on the verge of being wiped out from the scourge of war. History has taught us that war, wherever it happens, is the absolute worst experience for all affected. The wounds of war do not heal. Thus, the unabated killing and wanton destruction callous loss of lives in this conflict must come to an end. Madam Vice President, Namibia voted in support of the resolution presented by Jordan because we are sensitized to the pain and suffering of the Palestinian people. Today, this August assembly, or on Friday rather, this August assembly showed that indeed, as was said by Martin Luther King Jr., the moral arc of the universe is long but it bends towards justice. With the utmost compassion, I want to say to the permanent observer of Palestine and to his team that we feel the pain and suffering of the Palestinian people no less than we did when together we walked the corridors of the United Nations as oppressed people. We empathize with your protracted struggle for an in your inalienable right to self-determination. Namibia is with you on this journey as it has always been. The injustices meted out against you should be enough to condition us all to put up the guardrails of international law, international humanitarian law, and the compassion that embodies the very notion of humanity as your protection from further brutality. Namibia will continue to push these frontiers in your name using the systems, processes, and institutions at our disposal. Madam Vice President, last year this assembly adopted an important resolution which requested the International Court of Justice for an advisory opinion on the consequences of the legality of the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territory, including uh, East Jerusalem. While this consideration is sub judice, the continued escalation of violence, especially over the last 12 months, reminds us that we have a responsibility to reject harmful rhetoric which dehumanizes the Palestinian people. Human animals do not exist. Palestinian people, like all members of the human family, are entitled to the inherent dignity and the equal and inalienable rights that form the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. These are the guarantees that are enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and regard them as fundamental and indivisible. Madam President, the resilience of the Palestinian people in the face of collective punishment against an entire population, despite the indiscriminate and disproportionate use of force for decades, should invoke in us a sense of duty, a duty to bring to an end the grave escalation of violence and show that indeed humanity and compassion are an umbrella that unite us for the common cause of peace. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Namibia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Morocco. Seda Raisa. Madam President of the House, I would like to thank you. Uh, 
also the President of the General Assembly for uh, positively responding for the request by the Arabic group and the OIC for the resumed uh, extraordinary session, which comes within the context of an unprecedented uh, crisis and serious events that would undermine peace and security in the Middle East region that with the ramifications and repercussions uh, uh, that could affect the entire world, what we have seen over the last uh, few weeks uh, uh, of targeting uh, civilians, civilian objects, property, including uh, hospitals, schools, and uh, the vi uh, violations of international humanitarian law and international law of human rights uh, uh, would create a serious concern for the Kingdom of Morocco. And in this regard, uh, the Kingdom of Morocco would reiterate five key points in this regard as follows. One, to call for the de-escalation, stop the bloodshed and uh, halt military uh, attacks and also to uh, save the uh, region from uh, the uh, woes of uh, military conflict in order to achieve peace and stability. Secondly, to protect all civilians and uh, refrain from targeting them under the pretext of IHL and that, uh, uh, common principles of humanity. Thirdly, to allow the access of the uh, uh, seamless uh, flow of humanitarian aid with uh, sufficient quantity for the Gaza Strip because uh, the uh, humanitarian situation is unbearable. Fourthly, to reject all ideas and solutions that want to transfer the Palestinians and uh, drive them out of their uh, homeland to neighboring countries. Fifth, uh, we need to relaunch a genuine peace process that would lead to the two-state solution. Uh, the state of Palestine and on the uh, 4th of uh, June 1967 borders that lived in peace uh, side to side with the state of Israel and after the peace uh, summit that has been recently held in Cairo on October 21st the Kingdom of Morocco and eight other Arab states issued a statement requiring the Security Council to make it binding uh, to the parties to the conflict to immediately unconditionally uh, reach a ceasefire and to provide uh, uh, safe and uh, rapid access of humanitarian relief to Gaza Strip without any hindrance. Mr. President, uh, within uh, his firm commitment, uh, His Majesty King Mohammed VI, who is the chairman of the Jerusalem Committee uh, for the best interest of the Palestinian cause, and under his instruction, the Kingdom of Morocco has sent rapid and urgent humanitarian uh, aid to the Palestinian population, and we've delivered it to the uh, Egyptian Red Cross to guarantee its access into Gaza Strip and also the uh, f uh, finance house of uh, Jerusalem. Uh, headed by the, uh, His Majesty King Mohammed VI in order to, to send uh, such uh, uh, financing requirements uh, to the uh, medical facilities and social institutions that are addressing the uh, needs uh, resulting from the developments of the situation in Gaza. Mr. P President, uh, the Arabic group, OIC, an allied movement, has called for this extraordinary session after the Security Council failed to adopt a resolution that would put an end to the tragic situation in Gaza Strip. And we do hope that the resolution adopted uh, uh, last Friday would create a genuine opportunity uh, to raise hopes for the peoples of the region and to make a very important step in order to find a solution to, uh, for the current crisis. The Kingdom of Morocco reiterates its emphasis on its uh, firm and clear position vis-à-vis uh, -vis the just and fair uh, Palestinian cause and the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, including its right to an independent state of Palestine on the borders of uh, June 4, 1967, with the East Jerusalem as its uh, uh, capital, uh, side by side with the state of Israel, uh, as uh, the only guarantor of peace and stability in the region. The Kingdom of Morocco also reiterates that we need to stop and hold all procedures that would undermine the legal and historical status of the uh, sacred city. Uh, Al Quds. Uh, th uh, that's why it should always be uh, a symbol of peaceful coexistence uh, for the uh, followers of the three unitarian.
Unitarian faiths or religions, uh, uh, and also to be a center for respect and dialogue, as provided for in the Al-Quds Statement Communique signed by the Majesty Kingdom, uh, King Muhammad VI, uh, with the sponsorship of Pope uh, Francis uh, in uh, 2019, uh, signed in Rabat, Morocco. Finally, Mr. President would like to reiterate the content of the letter sent by uh, King Mohammed VI to, uh, ad addressed uh, to the chair of the uh, committee on the exercise of Palestinian people of their inalienable rights, and I quote, as uh, much as we emphasize uh, that the stalemate uh, in the political process between the Palestinian and the Palis uh, Israeli side does not serve peace, we uh, reiterate and emphasize and uh, uh, emphasize the positive uh, signs in order to rebuild the trust and relaunch genuine negotiations that would achieve a fair, just and lasting solution to the Palestinian cause according to the international uh, uh, resolutions and uh, based on the two state solutions. And of course, the Kingdom of Morocco, led by His Majesty King Mohammed VI, who is the chairman of the Al-Quds Committee, would always hold steadfast to the option of peace and reiterates its readiness to coordinate with all partners in order to engage genuinely in any international efforts that would uh, put an end to the current tragic and serious situation in Gaza. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Morocco and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Madam President, uh, today the extreme humanitarian crisis and the crime against the humanity are being committed in Gaza Strip or each grave concern in the international community. Last Friday, the tenth emergency special session of the General Assembly adopted the resolution calling for immediate and sustained humanitarian truth leading to the cessation of the hostility between Israel and Hamas and demanding that all parties immediately and fully comply with their obligation under international law, including international humanitarian law. However, the Israel turning blind eyes to unanimous demand of the international community has officially declared launch of the ground military operation in Gaza Strip. Thus, the Gaza is now held where there is, there is no safe place at all. The DPRK strongly condemn all indiscriminate attack targeting innocent people and critical civilian infrastructure like hospitals and schools. The crime against the humanity being committed against innocent people in Gaza Strip must be stopped immediately. Current Middle East crisis is inevitable result of the illegal act of the Israel in occupied East Jerusalem and the rest of occupied Palestine territory. However, some countries are further aggravating the situation in the Gaza Strip by disguising Israel as the victim and justifying the ongoing military aggression of Israel as exercise of the right to self-defense. At the UN Security Council meeting held on October 18, the United States cast the veto on the resolution to allow humanitarian access to Gaza Strip in Palestine for mere reason that the right to self-defense of Israel was not mentioned in the draft resolution submitted by the delegation of Brazil. Due to the United States' one-sided support for Israel, the painstaking efforts of the international community to put an end to armed conflict, save the lives of the greater number of innocent people, and diffuse military tense situation in the Middle East has failed. This clearly shows that the United States is violating international humanitarian law and international human, human rights law, and approving and encouraging crime against the humanity for only mere reason that Israel is its ally. 
Also, it has been proven once again that United States determined justice and injustice on the basis, basis of the whether a performer of act is pro-US or anti-US. It is a typical manifestation of the shameless double standard of the United States toward right to self-defense. What cannot be overlooked is that some Western countries are resorting to similar campaign against DPRK to forcibly link the Middle East crisis to us. Some mass media belonging to US administration are spreading groundless and false rumor that North Korea's weapon seems to be used for attack on Israel. They are also building up public opinion that DPRK will make free use of the strategy of blackmail diplomacy, escalating the regional tension by taking advantage of the U.S. great interest in Middle East and Ukraine. Clear is the U.S. sinister intention. It is nothing but bid to shift blame for Middle East crisis caused by its one-sided policy for Israel and double standard onto the third country and thus evade the international criticism focused on the United States. DPRK is watching with vigilance with illegal act of the United States, which has spawned war and arms conflict in different parts of the world and shifted responsibility for them into the independent sovereign state. My delegation firmly believe that Current critical crisis in Gaza City must be end immediately, and all civilians must be protected through the full implementation of the resolution adopted at this General Assembly. In conclusion, my delegation once again express our unwavering support for and solidarity with the Palestinian people in their just struggle to regain their legitimate national right, including establishment of the independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. I thank you, Madam President. I thank the distinguished representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the plurinational state of Bolivia. Thank you, President. We are grateful for the convening of this 10th special session, sorry, emergency special session. It's resumed ESS following the awful genocide that the Palestinian people are enduring at this time. President, the Charter of the United Nations establishes with absolute clarity in its first article that the f first primary purpose of this organization is to maintain international peace and security and to take uh, collective measures to prevent and eliminate uh, threats to peace and to end acts of aggression or other uh, endangerments of the peace. In this regard, we highlight the efforts deployed by the United Nations to attempt to resolve the situation of the Palestinian people. We recognize the diplomatic efforts that at this very moment are being undertaken by the Secretary General together with other international stakeholders. However, we note that all of these efforts have been insufficient to grant them peace and the right to self-determination that is to the Palestinian people at the end of the, since the end of the 19th century, year after year, these people have been displaced from their territory for colonial ends. There is a great debt to the people of Palestine because we were not able to comply with what we established as the resolution in 1947 for a just and lasting peace. As our actions, as their actions progress slowly, Israel has benefited from the resolution that gave them statehood and is now an occupying power, and it ignores all of the further decisions and resolutions of the United Nations. This is a clear demonstration of uh, disregard and a lack of respect for the international community and all developments in 
international law and international humanitarian law, which are the foundation for international peace and security. President, Excellencies, colleagues, we reject the loss of life in any part of the world and the suffering of peoples regardless of their nationality. For this reason, we must act with urgency and we must do so coherently. The lives of Palestinian people, men and women, have the same value as those of all citizens of the world. In recent days, we have watched stunned these uh, uh, disproportionate attacks against civilians in Gaza. T today, just today, uh, to date, more than 8,500 Palestinians have lost their lives. Some 70% of them are women and children. We are at a turning point in this conflict where Israel, as the occupying power, has decided to apply collective punishment to the Palestinians in Gaza. So those who it is, does not recognize their existence, it is destroying their schools, hospitals, and depriving them of their most basic rights, leaving the population without food, without fuel, without electricity, without medical assistance, and without water. The inhuman aggressiveness and the false arguments of the State of Israel can no longer be sustained. How is it possible for the aggressor now to call for the right to defense, placing itself as a victim? This cannot be covered up. The aggressor and the one responsible for genocide is Israel. Those responsible for these crimes against humanity, for these war crimes, must be held accountable and must be brought to international justice. Excellencies, colleagues, President, we cannot continue to watch indifferently children, human beings beneath the rubble and innocent lives are being uh, torn away in devastation as a result of bombs and weapons. The action of the United Nations can save thousands of lives. For this reason, all parties and those involved must assume the responsibility and seek peace and justice in this regard. My delegation which co-sponsored the resolution presented by Jordan and that was approved by an overwhelming majority of this international community so that there be an immediate ceasefire and uh, the humanitarian needs of the Palestinian people be attended to as well as the citizens of other countries who are also trapped in the region. Let there be an end to the weapons and to the death. Life is the most precious good that humanity has. We regret the uh, phase out of the uh, Security Council uh, following uh, Brazil's initiative. This would have been an opportunity for peace, and this would have represented a small light at the end of the tunnel for the Palestinians in Gaza. We call for the Security Council to act swiftly and to send a unanimous, clear, and strong message to Israel so that they stop taking more innocent lives. Madam President, Bolivia has the utmost respect for international law, for the Charter of the United Nations, and for the member states, and we will go down on the right side of history. We are on the side of the rights of the Palestinian people. As a result, the people and government of Bolivia has taken the decision to break diplomatic ties from today with the State of Israel because we consider it a state that does not respect life of peoples of international, international law or international humanitarian law. President, colleagues, we reiterate that the only formula that can truly guarantee peace and security in the region is the full recognition of the state of Palestine in the uh, internationally recognized pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Furthermore, in accordance with its resolutions and decisions, the United Nations organization should incorporate as soon as possible as a full member state of this General Assembly, the State of Palestine. 
Finally, Madam President, free, uh, free Palestine is not just a cause of the Palestinian people, but rather a question of global justice and peace. The liberty and dignity of human beings must be respected in all corners of this planet, and it is our duty to work together to achieve a future in which Palestine can once and for all be free. To our brothers and sisters in Palestine, once again, I reiterate, you are not alone. Bolivia stands with you, and the peoples of the world are with you also. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the plurinational state of Bolivia, and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Ecuador. Gracias, señora. Thank you, President. It is necessary that the activity of the great powers in one way or another that in one way or another support uh, the various parties to the conflict in the Middle East be rather directed to the quest for solutions towards the establishment of a constructive peace. And it should not hinder possible formulas for agreement and understanding. The conflict in the Middle East, because of its explosive character, obliges the United Nations to seek tirelessly to bring it to an end. On the 24th of September 1973, the Foreign Minister of Ecuador, Antonio Lucio Paredes, spoke these words before the General Assembly. And as I said just a few days ago at the Security Council, these words are still valid some 50 years later, more than 50 years later. President, as I thank you for convening this 10th emergency special session, I reiterate the strongest and most vigorous condemnation of the unjustifiable terrorist attacks perpetrated by Hamas. I express our deepest condolences to the families of the victims of these horrendous attacks. Our solidarity with the people of Israel and with other countries whose nationals have been affected stands firm. We demand that the hostages taken by Hamas be released immediately and unconditionally. There is no possible justification for attacking civilians, and it is worse yet to use them as human shields. Palestine has the inalienable right to self-determination. It also has the right to legitimate aspirations to live with security, freedom, justice, opportunities, and dignity. Unfortunately, at this time, painful and unacceptable deaths of civilians continue to occur, including the deaths of women and children of Palestine. We reiterate our solidarity with their families and with the people of Palestine. Israel has the right to defend its population and to exercise self-defense. Like all states, it must act in accordance with international law and it must strictly respect the principles of international humanitarian law, namely necessity, proportionality, differentiation, and humanity. Even during war, there are rules, and there is no justification whatsoever for causing pain and suffering to innocent civilians. Ecuador is convinced that when people act in good faith, there is actually no contradiction between exhausting all efforts for the protection of innocent civilians, including in the course of armed conflict and the guarantee and, and sorry, guaranteeing security and protection for the, the, the duty that states have to protect and uh, secure their nationals. For this reason, we support and we are grateful for the efforts of the Secretary General and other actors to achieve a swift humanitarian access that is sufficient and unhindered for the bright provisions of vital necessities to Gaza, such as water, food, and fuel, and thus avoid 
a humanitarian tragedy and, and the one that is currently being perpetrated uh, rising to incalculable proportions at this time, all uh, actors must demonstrate restraint to avoid exacerbating tensions and prevent expansion of violence to other areas. This would only cause more death and more suffering. Madam President, the resolution submitted by Jordan and adopted by this assembly issues an unassailable call for the respect of international law, for international humanitarian law and international human rights law. It condemns all acts of violence against civilians, including acts of terror. We understand this to include the terrorist acts initiated by Hamas on the 7th of October. The resolution also sets the two-state solution as a basis for a path to a peaceful and negotiated settlement that will put a definitive end to the conflict in the Middle East in accordance with our historic position on this issue. From our point of view, the text omits a few things that are necessary, such as an explicit allusion, allusion to Hamas, whose uh, authority behind the terrorist attacks has not been called into expression, and also the word hostages, which should be clearly expressed as a truth. For uh, this uh, reason, we voted in favor of the amendment proposed by Canada, which would have corrected these omissions. The deficiencies of the text, however, are not greater than the urgency of the messages that it that the resolution sends on the protection of civilians that is so urgently needed at this time. And for this reason, Ecuador voted in favor of the resolution. Madam President, since 1967, the General Assembly has convened at least three emergency special sessions on the conflict in the Middle East. It has now been 56 years since then. This 10th emergency special session was initially convened in 1997, 26 years ago. Since then, it has been resumed on 17 occasions. Almost eight decades of conflict, thousands upon thousands of deaths, the immeasurable pain and suffering of entire generations are the clearest evidence and proof that violence is not the solution. It is time to stop the logic of seeking to blame others and rather to focus. It is now time to focus once and for all on a permanent settlement to this question. For this reason, reiterate what my delegation has repeated on many occasions in this assembly and in other fora. The only way to bring an end to this conflict is through a peaceful solution, one that is negotiated and definitive and fair for the parties, namely the existence of two states, Palestine and Israel, on the basis of the 1967 borders and the relevant resolutions. Let us all work to this end. This represents our collective responsibility. President, I will conclude this uh, statement as I began recalling a, a statement uttered uh, close to three decades ago, but still fully valid. And I'm referring to the statement of the 31st of January 1992 delivered by uh, the then Secretary General, Butrus Butrus Ghali, to the Security Council, and he said, with all of the convulsions in global society, only one power is left that can impose order on incipient chaos. It is the power of principles transcending and changing perceptions of expediency. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Ecuador and now gives the floor to the distinguished representative of Argentina. Muchas gracias, señora Presidenta. Thank you, President. Argentina continues it a priority to avoid, as a matter of urgency, the conflict between Israel and the Gaza Strip. 
all efforts must be deployed in order for the humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip to not continue getting worse and in order to ensure that humanitarian assistance reaches those who need it. It is fundamental that we protect the civilian population regardless of their nationality. Hamas must release the hostages immediately and unconditionally. Argentina joins all of the calls towards achieving an immediate and sustainable ceasefire. For this reason, Argentina has voted in favor of the resolution that we adopted in this General Assembly on Friday. My country condemns terrorism in all of its forms. Terrorist attacks are unacceptable. They have no justification whatsoever and they are to be deplored by the entire international community in this framework. I wish to reiterate unequivocally and emphatically, as my government did on the 7th of September, we reiterate Argentina's firm condemnation of the terrorist attacks perpetrated by Hamas against Israel. We call for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages of all nationalities, which include Argentinian nationals, and we hold those who have abducted them directly responsible for their well-being. While we recognize the right of Israel to self-defense and the need for it to protect its population, we emphasize the need for measures that are taken to respect international law and international humanitarian law, in particular as regards the uh, principles of differentiation and proportionality. The civilian population should be protected under all circumstances in compliance with international law. Our experience in the Middle East has taught us that hospitals, schools, and UN installations are the areas that civilians most frequently resort to to protect themselves. These places should be respected respected without exception. Any attack against them represents a violation of international humanitarian law. My country condemns the attack on the Al Hali Arab hospital located in the north of the Gaza Strip. This caused hundreds of deaths and hundreds of injured. The humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip, as stated by various UN agencies, is devastating. The population, Palestinian population residing in Gaza, should have access to essential public services as and uh, in order to cover their most basic needs it is essential that we open secure and safe humanitarian corridors so that international assistance can as quickly as possible reach those who need it under this framework we welcome the reopening of the rafa crossing for the arrival of humanitarian aid to gaza we hope that this will be the first uh, step but we uh, note that it is operating at a far lower level to prior to the conflict. And we nevertheless hope that this will represent a first step to the sustainable provision of uh, basic, uh, uh, basic uh, goods in a safe and unhindered way. Through our humanitarian agency in the White Helmets, uh, in Argentina is prepared to cooperate with the international efforts. We are also concerned about the tension on the borders of Israel with Syria and Lebanon that can uh, cause further deterioration of stability in the region. We therefore call on all parties to avoid escalation of clashes with unpredictable consequences. Com Argentina is convinced that no military solution is possible and nor can one be imposed through terrorist attacks. For this reason, it is only through good faith negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians on the basis of the vision of two states living alongside one another in peace and security within secure and internationally recognized borders can a definitive peace be achieved in the region. The United Nations and the international community as a whole must w commit in a new way to the peace agenda in the Middle East. 
the risks of inaction are becoming more obvious every day. And we have been witnessing, as we have been witnessing with horror in recent days, the Security Council and the General Assembly have a responsibility to comply with the Charter of the United Nations, and we must abide by this responsibility. The credibility of the whole United Nations system is at stake. In this way, the international community should not lose sight of the fact that the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip are going to need significant and sustained international support in order to rebuild their basic infrastructure, to rebuild their homes and the buildings that have been destroyed. Thousands have died since the beginning of this crisis. And therefore, before I conclude, I wish on behalf of the people and government of Argentina to extend our most deeply felt condolences to the families of the victims, be they Israelis, Palestinian or of other nationalities. Argentina, as we have done in the past, will continue to support all efforts and initiatives for peace, for the benefit of the peoples of Palestine and Israel and of all peoples of the Middle East. I thank you, Madam President. I thank the distinguished representative of Argentina and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Spain. Thank you very much, Madam President. Let me begin by conveying to you, uh, to, to sorry, the families of all of the victims of this escalating violence since the 7th of October, including the workers of the United Nations who have lost their lives in the course of their duty. It is extremely important for the General Assembly to be meeting to deal with the extremely grave situation in the Middle East and its humanitarian consequences. We decisively support the efforts of the United Nations led by the Secretary General to bring an end to the crisis. Following the terrorist attacks of Hamas against Israel on the 7th of October, the situation in the region has degenerating with a new uh, level of violence with unforeseeable consequences for both the region and the rest of the world. The government of Spain has reiterated its a strong condemnation of terrorism and violence and its full solidarity with the victims. Spain has recognized the right of Israel to defend itself against these terrorist attacks in full respect for international law and international humanitarian law. Spain supports the urgent request of the Secretary, uh, call the Secretary General for a uh, humanitarian ceasefire. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is getting worse every moment. Israel and the rest of the international community have a duty to protect the civilian population in Palestine and to enable access for humanitarian aid and provisions to the population of Gaza, especially drinking water, food, medicines, and fuel for uh, desalination plants. We have expressed our great concern for the situation of more than 200 hostages, including one Spanish citizen. All hostages must be released immediately and unconditionally. The taking of hostages represents a war crime. President, the risk of this conflict spreading across the region is high. In the West Bank, we are concerned by the increase of violence by settlers against the civilian Palestinian population. We are also concerned about the stability in southern Lebanon and other countries in the region. We must avoid a further escalation of the conflict and a regional crisis at all costs for this region. We must avoid political instrumentalization of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Spain is firmly committed to the work of UNFIL, and it is fundamental that we support it and we are contribute and redu contribute to reducing tensions between regional actors. As we said at the outset, we must uh, focus on a credible path to peace in order to cease the current hostilities. This necessarily requires the realization of a solution for two states, Israel and Palestine, coexisting in peace and security in accordance with the parameters that the Security Council has validated on r repeated occasions. Spain has always been convinced that the 
uh, solution, the two-state solution is the only possible response to the national aspirations of both Israelis and Palestinians. For this reason, Spain reiterates the need to hold an international peace conference with the parties and the international community within a short time frame so that the current hostilities may end. We should recover the spirit that guided the Madrid Peace Conference of 1991 and the Oslo Accords. The goal of this conference should be to successfully conclude a process that began more than three decades ago. Only then will we be able to end these cycles of violence. Finally, I wish to highlight that Spain voted in favor of the resolution adopted on Friday on the understanding that the General Assembly must express itself clearly and with urgency on the need to end the unsustainable humanitarian crisis in Gaza. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Spain and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Bangladesh. Thank you, Madam President. We thank the PGA for convening the 10th emergency special session of the UNGA. Bangladesh aligns itself with the statement delivered by Mauritania on behalf of the OIC group. The people of Palestine has been going through unimaginable misery, inhuman treatment, and colonial subjugation owing to occupation, continuous attacks and killings, expansion of illegal settlement, demolition of homes, and forcible transfer by Israeli occupying forces for decades. However, in the last 24 days, what is happening has gone beyond description, which has crossed all boundaries of international norms and principles. It discriminate and dis disproportionate bombardment of, on Gaza, even on hospitals and refugee camps by Israel, has already killed more than 8,000, around half being children, and around 20,000 have been injured. The number is increasing by every passing minute. More than 1.5 million Palestinians have been displaced internally in an area of just 140 square miles, and do, that do not have necessary bare minimum life-saving assistance. They're running out of food, water, electricity, shelter, and medical supplies. At this moment, immediate ceasefire is a must and I urge this August assembly to do the righteous thing to save hundreds of thousands of lives. Madam President, it is regrettable that due to the failure of the Security Council to take action, thousands of civilians have already been killed and the delay in ceasefire will kill, injure, and displace more innocent people. The situation is further deteriorating with the ground invasion by Israel. We have seen in the past also the inaction of the Security Council and failure to implement its own resolutions had encouraged the occupying power to continue its aggressions and brutality that tantamount to war crimes. We urge again to take immediate action to stop the war and take necessary steps to implement all the resolutions of the United Nations related to Palestine. Madam President, blocking of humanitarian assistance is totally unacceptable and cannot be justified, justified in any way. Blockade of fuel and electricity has brought hospitals to a standstill, risking the lives of the thousands of wounded and the sick. Immediate humanitarian access to Gaza with adequate life-saving assistance needs to be ensured. We welcome the humanitarian aid through Rafah crossing but we all know the meagerness of the supplies going into Gaza, which is characterized, characterized by the Secretary General as a drop in the ocean. We call once again to ensure immediate, continuous, sufficient, and unhindered provision of essential supplies and services to civilians throughout the Gaza Strip. Madam President, we're deeply concerned at the killing of UN and other aid workers, health personnel, and journalists in Gaza, and we strongly condemn such heinous act. It is unfortunate that 67 UNRWA staff have been killed, and numerous UNRWA installations have been damaged so far. 
We demand protection of the United Nations facilities and all humanitarian installations. We have been seeing bombing on hospitals, schools, and shelters with a deliberate attack to kill the civilians. Are these not the incidents of war crimes and genocide? It is not acceptable collectively punishing a civilian population who have been struggling for their independence for more than seven decades, and any attack cannot be justified in the name of right to self-defense. As an occupying power, Israel, Israel's claim of right, right to self-defense and its endorsement by many is nothing but a fallacy of international law on the question of occupation and the rights and duties of occupying power. Moreover, this August Assembly cannot discriminate among people while taking decisions. I echo the words of the Palestinian ambassador in his recent deliberation in the Security Council that Palestinian lives are not less precious than the Israeli lives. We also reject unequivocally Israel's call to forcibly displace the Palestinians out of their home, own homeland, which is an attempt to further worsen the humanitarian situation in the entire region. Madam President, we need to hold Israel accountable for its war crimes and blatant disrespect for international humanitarian law. We have clear legal definitions in the international law of genocide, of war crimes, of crimes against humanity. Failure to do so in the past, mainly due to the blatant double standard undertaken by some governments and media alike, has brought this awful day. And it is a shame for all of us that after having so many resolutions, even in the Security Council, with clear roadmap of the solution to the crisis, we have failed to implement this. Madam President, I would like to refer to the Secretary General, who said that the attack on 7th October did not happen in vacuum. Decades-long occupation and Israel's absolute impunity, granted by some member states, from consequences of committing atrocities and undermining all diplomatic and multilateral efforts to establish peace in the Middle East towards the two-state solution has all led to this point today. We do not want any further loss of lives anywhere. In this regard, we would like to repeat that the only solution to this crisis, the only way to establish peace in Palestine and the whole region is establishment of an independent, viable, and sovereign Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital under a two-state solution based on the pre-1967 borders. Madam President, before concluding, I'd like to remind once again that the UN Charter starts with our determination to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. And if we fail to do so, we will remain accountable to our future generations we must not lose sight of the right of self-determination of the people of the occupied Palestinian territories. However, at this time, this is more important than ever to avoid any more killing, to ensure humanitarian assistance, to save the civilians and humanitarian personnel. We call upon Israel to abide by the GA resolution adopted last Friday by two-third majority, which my delegation co-sponsored, and to stop all atrocities immediately by agreeing, agreeing to a ceasefire. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Bangladesh and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Lao People's Democratic Republic. Madam President, the international community stands at the precipice of a grave security crisis, teetering on the brink of a major catastrophe. Immediate and unified actions are imperative to avert this impending disaster. Following the UN Security Council's inability to reach a consensus on a resolution, for an immediate ceasefire and the provision of urgent humanitarian assistance to save innocent lives in Gaza. The responsibility now rests with the, National, with the General Assembly to address this long overdue yet 
critically urgent issue with an aim of halting the ongoing violent hostilities between Israel and Palestine. For over seven decades, political division have hindered progress on the Israeli-Palestine issue. Regrettably, these divisions have recently stalled any concrete action from this organization to protect civilians in the dire need of exercising their fundamental right to survival. As this humanitarian tragedy unfolds, it is crucial for, the, for all United Nations members to set aside unilateral political interests and unite unconditionally to save the innocent lives caught in the conflict. We urge all concerned parties to exercise maximum restraint, halt all violent acts, and reopen humanitarian corridors. Madam President, the Lao PDI has been closely monitoring the violent hostilities between Israel and Palestine with deep concern. Witnessing the devastating toll on lives and property, as a resp responsible UN member and in our commitment to contributing to peace in the Middle East, we therefore have supported the efforts by other UN member states to reconvene this 10th emergency, emergency special session of the General Assembly. We commend the Secretary General, all UN personnel and non-governmental organizations who continue to risk their lives working tirelessly in conflict areas, actively engaging with all parties to de-escalate violence and prevent further humanitarian crises. The recent three weeks of violence underscore the urgent need for an immediate comprehensive ceasefire despite positive developments such as the release of some hostages and the initial allowance of humanitarian supplies through the Rafah checkpoint. There is much more need to be done. This includes providing efficient and unconditional humanitarian assistance. Madam President, given the current circumstances, it is imperative that we pursue diplomatic solutions and promote messages of peace. First, recognizing that violence benefits no one is crucial. Military engagement only exacerbates the crisis, making an immediate humanitarian ceasefire vital and underscoring the need for dialogue and negotiation. Second, we must unequivocally condemn all acts of violence and assaults on civilians. Both Palestinian and Israeli populations deserve to live free from fear with their, secure, with their security equally safeguarded. Third, Strict adherence to international humanitarian law is essential. Life-saving humanitarian aid, food, water, medicine, fuel must be allowed to reach all civilians in Gaza swiftly, safely, and at scale. Ensuring delivery of these life-saving supplies at the scale needed for the people in Gaza, including the UN, UNRWA, ICRC personnel, and individuals of all nationalities is a top priority. Escalate, uh, establishing unhindered humanitarian corridors and the unconditional release of people held captive are critical steps. Fourth, countries with influence in the region must collaborate with all relevant parties to prevent escalation and regional spillover. And fifth, the ultimate solution to the Palestinian issue lies in the implementation of the two-state solution, enabling Palestine and Israel to coexist peacefully. 
working towards comprehensive, just, and enduring settlement guided by the relevant UN resolutions and international peace efforts is fundamental. Madam President, our immediate obligation is to protect civilians, including during acts of self-defense and in situations involving hostages, hospitals, and schools. We must discourage incitement, combat dehumanization, and work tirelessly to protect the lives of the Palestinians and Israelis and victims of other nations caught in this conflict. In conclusion, allow me to invoke a, the poignant words of the late Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin during the Oslo Accords signing ceremony in 1993, and I quote, we are destined to live together on the same soil, in the same land, enough of blood and tears, enough, end of quote. These words serve as a timeless reminder of our shared humanity and urgent need for peace. And I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Lao People's Democratic Republic and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Sierra Leone. Madam President, thank you for convening this open debate. The present situation in the Middle East and the response of the United Nations Security Council in the past weeks and even up to yesterday is an indication that the United Nations needs to be constructive, deliberate, and sincere in its approach to its work and actions. The world is counting on the United Nations, more especially the Security Council, uh, it must not renege in fulfilling its mandate. Sierra Leone unequivocally condemns in the strongest terms the undefendable heinous attack against Israeli civilians by Hamas on the 7th of October 2023. Sierra Leone also equally condemns in the strongest terms the taking of hostages by Hamas and calls for their immediate and unconditional release. Since the 7th October attacks, we have further noted with grave concern the escalation of the violence, particularly the response by Israel. In noting the existence of the right to self-defense in the Charter of the United Nations, which is available to all states, we are of the firm view that any response must be in line with international law, in particular, in, in, in particular international humanitarian law, human rights, and other relevant legal norms. We therefore unequivocally condemn attacks on civilians and civilian objects. And in this regard, we also condemn in the strongest terms the heinous attack on the Al Ali Baptist Hospital in the Gaza Strip and other civilian facilities, which is totally unacceptable. We, call, we support the calls for an investigation into the matter. As we urge for timely investigations, Australian calls for accountability mechanisms to be fully engaged to preserve any evidence of violations of international law to ensure accountability. We deeply sympathize with the families of the victims of regrettable recent escalation of violence and the go ongoing occupation. While we can only offer our deep sympathies at this stage, United Nations, and more especially the Security Council, can act and must act. Madam President, as we welcome the diplomatic engagements that have led to the flow of limited humanitarian aid into Gaza, Sierra Leone is gravely concerned about the ever deteriorating humanitarian situation with the simultaneous escalation of violence. The deteriorating humanitarian situation and, and the inability of UNRWA to provide adequate humanitarian assistance to civilians in Gaza owing to the indiscriminate bombardment necessitates a humanitarian ceasefire and the establishment of humanitarian corridors for the delivery of humanitarian aid to civilians. The humanitarian ceasefire must indeed ensure full, speedy, safe, 
and unimpeded humanitarian access for United Nations humanitarian agencies and implementing partners. Sierra Leone joined the strong call for the provision of unrestricted and adequate essential goods and services to civilians, including electricity, water, fuel, food and medical supplies in Gaza. This is only in compliance with international humanitarian law to ensure the survival of civilians. Madam President, we note with concern the danger of a spillover of the current crisis in the Middle East region. If consolidated action is not taken, a spillover will compound the existing fragile situation in the region. Regrettably, the region is marked by mass displacement and unimaginable humanitarian crisis and insecurity and loss of civilian lives. With this recent escalation, we are fully convinced that it is only genuine dialogue and negotiations based on the two-state solution that will guarantee a lasting peace between Israel and Palestine. Sierra Leone hereby calls for concerted efforts to explore diplomatic and political avenues geared towards find finding a peaceful, just, and lasting solution to this conflict. Madam President, in this moment of multiple and interlocking crises, when the Security Council is confronted with ever-increasing conflicts around the world, ranging from the ongoing conflicts in the Middle East, the Ukraine, the Sudan, among other places, the Council needs to be reformed to ensure that if it remains fit for purpose, legitimate, inclusive, and ge geographically balanced to perform its overarching duty of maintaining global peace and security. The intergovernmental negotiations on the reform of the United Nations Security Council aims to come to an agreement to make the Council more broadly representative, efficient, and effective in the exercise of its mandate, especially in terms of addressing conflicts that have been ongoing for many years. As the coordinator of the African Union Committee of 10 for the reform of the Security Council, Sierra Leone attaches great importance to these negotiations. And in light of the failings of the Council to act with the needed urgency, we urge Member States to fully support ongoing initiative to reform the Security Council in particular for the Council to reflect present-day geopolitical realities. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Sierra Leone and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Canada. Uh, Madam President, as this emergency session on the situation in Gaza and the Middle East region winds down, <coughs> it's important that we have to continue all of our collective diplomatic efforts because on the ground, which is where things matter, we all know the situation is very dire. Last week, Canada introduced an amendment to the resolution in an effort to ensure that the General Assembly acknowledged that this current situation following, fo arose following an unconscionable terrorist attack by Hamas on Israeli civilians on October 7th, 2023, in which 1,400 people were killed. Canada is pleased that over half of the voting members of the Assembly felt the same way last Friday, but regrets that its amendment did not pass, and therefore we abstained on the resolution. But I'm speaking today because I want to make it clear that this does not change in any way Canada's diplomatic efforts here and in the region, which are focused on ensuring, first of all, that the hostages currently held by Hamas, be they Israeli, Canadian, Thai, American, Argentinian, Chinese, or Russian, that they all be released as soon as possible. That until hostilities stop between the parties, all possible steps must be taken to limit the loss of life. 
that humanitarian services are increased immediately and substantially, and that Egypt, Israel, and the UN cooperate fully to ensure that vital humanitarian help is provided. We have already allocated $60 million, and we're trying to get these funds to work as quickly as possible. That in order to ensure the above critical steps, and there's still not enough trucks getting through, and there's still not enough people getting the assistance that they need. We need to have assurances and measures taken by all parties and all combatants to guarantee the safe delivery and distribution of humanitarian assistance. And yes, that over 400 Canadian nationals and permanent residents currently trapped in Gaza be permitted to leave, along with many other international citizens who are seeking to leave Gaza. We know that many efforts are underway here, on the ground, in many regional capitals to achieve these objectives, and we are ready to engage in whatever diplomatic and other efforts are needed to resolve them. But we have to come to terms with several things. The first is the terrible toll that the current conflict is taking. All of us weep for over the 3,200 children killed in Gaza in the last three weeks, just as we weep for the Israeli children lost on or since October the 7th. As I told the assembly the other day, there is no hierarchy in death. It affects all of us. And that is why we are urging further steps to deal with the rapidly deteriorating humanitarian situation, why we need rapid and unimpeded access to assistance, and that is why we endorse the need for humanitarian pauses that are going to be, should be, need to be agreed to by all combatants. At the same time, we need to keep our eyes on discussions around a sustainable political solution to this conflict. And this is what needs to change. How to do it is diplomacy's necessary task. We need to understand the talk about the two-state solution, which many of us have talked about today, is empty unless it's accompanied by the end of the violent rhetoric of absolutism, violent acts of terror, and the ongoing refusal to accept the legitimate interests of all parties. There is no point in drafting agreements and constitutions in the air. The security interests of everyone must be respected. Peace will only come with a willingness to compromise, and that will only happen once all parties understand the deep risks and the terrible costs of the current confrontation. We know that what this organization does, we pass or we don't pass resolutions, and we debate them. But achieving the reality of a two-state solution, not a theoretical two-state solution, but a real one, something that can really be done and accepted by all the parties. Two states whose borders and boundaries would be both mutually and internationally recognized, whose people can live in peace, respect, and security, means that deep and practical steps must be taken to resolve the issues in dispute. Two pays any country or organization that denies the right of the Palestinian people and the right of the Israeli people to have their own state within safe and recognized borders denies these people rights which are essential for peace. Each of us can have more than one thought at the time, at a time. It is possible to fully and strongly support the right of Israel to exist while criticizing certain Israeli policies. It is possible to fully and strongly support the self-determination 
of the Palestinians, all while designating Hamas as a terrorist organization and while unequivocally condemning its actions. Many delegations, moreover, had indicated to us that the adoption of the Canadian Amendment would have allowed an even larger majority of states to support the resolution. And if we can at least name Hamas as a terrorist organization, but without this, we will not reach a true two-state solution for the simple reason that there is no country here that would easily or equally live with a terrorist group on their frontiers. It is possible to believe in the right of Israel to defend itself in accordance with the international law and to call for humanitarian corridors and pauses. It is possible to show proof of true empathy for people on all sides without compromising one's principles. Interpretations of history and context and follow on references to original sin, such as I've heard over the last couple of weeks, are a slippery and a dangerous slope. We cannot allow anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or hatred of any kind to take hold because they risk feeding a populism that shrinks the spaces we need for dialogue, including in this assembly. We can have our debates in this assembly, but it's important for us to understand that our job is also to find solutions. When we go down the wrong path, we're doing things that are harmful, that are a disservice to us all, and that are, frankly, a disservice to diplomacy. The great writer, Irish writer James Joyce once described history as a nightmare from which we are desperately trying to awaken. We cannot undo what has been done, but we can acknowledge it. We can name it and take the necessary steps to repair it and move forward. As has been recalled already by other speakers today, these principles that I have described have been accepted by others in the past. They have been shown to work around the world, and they have been accepted in this region since the historical journey of President Sadat of Egypt to the Knesset in Jerusalem in 1977, one of the true moments of great statesmanship in the history of this conflict. Since that date, efforts have been made by Israeli and Palestinian leaders to reach an understanding between them many times, but not, it must be said, in recent years. There are many reasons for this, but since the break off of serious negotiations 20 years ago, the prevalence of violent extremism, including escalating settler violence in the West Bank, the failure to build on past understandings, and the now shattered illusion that an inherently explosive situation could somehow be successfully managed have shown that this approach and these approaches have brought us no closer to a two-state solution or indeed to any peaceful solution. Canada has been deeply engaged in issues of peace and security in the Middle East since the foundation of the UN in 1945. Lester Pearson, a former Canadian foreign minister and former president of this General Assembly, proposed the first UN peacekeeping force, UNEF, following the Suez Crisis. 23 Canadian soldiers are buried among the 3,000 in the Commonwealth Cemetery in Gaza. Madam President, we must find a way to shift the dialogue from the language of impulse to the language of consequence. Canada is ready, as we have always been, to play our part in establishing this dialogue. 
Thank you, Madam President. I thank the distinguished representative of Canada. We have heard the last speaker in the debate on this item for this meeting. We shall hear the remaining speakers tomorrow afternoon following the conclusion of the consideration of agenda item 74, report of the International Criminal Court in this hall. The exercise of the right of reply has been requested. May I remind uh, members that statements in the exercise of right of reply are limited to 10 minutes for the first interventions and to five minutes for the second intervention and should be made by delegations from their seats. I call on the representative of Thailand. Madam President, my delegation is taking the floor in exercise of its right of reply. Two references made by the distinguished permanent representative of Israel in his statement on Thursday, 26 October, at the 39th meeting of this 10th emergency special session to an agricultural worker from Thailand accompanied by the displaying of a video footage from a tablet showing that victim asserted to be a Thai being inhumanely killed. Thailand is gravely concerned over the fate of our innocent Thai citizens caught in the conflict. However, we disapprove of the display of such graphic and gruesome footage, which does not afford the proper respect and due consideration for the deceased and his family. Displaying such footage is inappropriate as it is insensitive, and it is unfortunate that it took place at this very General Assembly Hall. For the record, we condemn the killing of innocent civilians, regardless of nationality, by any group for whatever reason. Madam President, we appreciate that appropriate action has been undertaken here with regard to such video footage. Going forward, we sincerely hope that the displaying of inappropriate video footage here at the United Nations would not happen again and that appropriate steps would be taken by the United Nations to help prevent such incidents in the future. Thank you, Madam President. I see no more requests for the floor. The meeting is uh, adjourned. <laughs>